What is what is good guys? Charles from Team COG coming at you guys here with a local report. I went to locals this Saturday and ended up getting kind of thrashed with, as you guys can see, Fire Fist. So I'm going to go through my deck list real quick, show you guys some changes, talk about my matchups, and just kind of, you know, uh, go on from there. Uh, before I continue on guys, we are at 7 members now. At 10 members we are doing a huge, huge member giveaway. So please, if you guys can, support the channel that way. If you guys can't support the channel by becoming a member, head on over and listen to the Rogue Crusade podcast, which is linked in the description below. Also, guys, today will mark the release of our Emperor Charles 3D printed field center for the upcoming Infernoble Knight strategy. Uh, it's a strategy that I was looking at picking up, but I actually had to put my funds and my budget elsewhere for something special for you guys that will be dropping here in the next month or so, maybe like mid-September, if anything, hopefully sooner, and just a lot of other things, a lot of projects come in that I didn't have time to tinker with Infernoble, but you guys can get your Emperor Charles, which is me in anime form, uh, Field Center today. Link will be in the description below. Yeah, so let's go ahead and jump through. We played, I think it was five rounds. Uh, five rounds was pretty a lot. Uh, I can go ahead and tell you guys right off the bat, if I knew this deck like I knew Crusadia, uh, it would be, definitely would have been different in a few matchups. There's a lot of things like I totally missed. I played Medolce round one, got 2-0 there, played Invoke Dogmatica where I made a horrible, horrible misplay. Game one, or yeah, game one, he opened very weak and I had a super strong hand. It's just I forgot that Almirage can protect from Ogre and my Eagle ate that Ogre. And then after that, I think it was for hire at the bottom tables at for hire. I ended up just sweeping that match pretty easily. Moved on up to Numeron Neos, which deck profile will be coming up, I believe, tomorrow or Friday, depending on uh, how the upload schedule is. I ended up 2 0 that, but that was primitive Yu Gi Oh! And uh, yeah, so. This is the second locals I've taken this deck to, and it definitely has shown that I need to test with it a lot more. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into kind of the list here and plow through it. Uh, yeah, so three elephant. This card is phenomenal. I want you want to see this card all the time, no matter what. Uh, three panda. Panda is your multi faker. It is just remarkable how. There we go. And yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, it was just remarkable how well Panda is, like, just the ability to flip Simto and then special summon this guy. Definitely, definitely really busted. Uh, three Raven. So, throughout the entire tournament, the Raven and Panda combo here was, like, the combo that got me where I needed to go most of the times. It's just quite crazy. Uh, to come from a deck, like, that has, like, 20-plus starters and 20-plus extenders to a deck to where, like, you have certain starters and certain extenders, definitely, um really shows if that makes sense uh, because like you need elephant plus like tinky and tinky can't just be like it's not tinky's not reinforcements of the army tinky is uh you need tinky like tinky has to be there because you need it for like elephant and stuff like that so it's not like tinky can be replaced with any other fire fist it has to be tinky sort of thing so you need like specific combo starters combo extenders etc and coming from a deck to where you have like 20 plus of like starters and extenders it definitely was a uh, you made it made me real blessed to uh humbled me down quite a bit to all the combo players out there who don't have like gas like their deck is not straight gas with the combo starters and extenders so uh three raven and then of course we have the three dragon dragon's really good it's your non once per turn monster reborn this guy ate like two in perms throughout the day and i was just able to bring it back i do take note that use cost to your advantage and like use like buffalo to send off like dome and this and then dome can bring back the same dragon that just got sent because cost has to be paid so do keep that in mind uh two roosters rooster is phenomenal i've actually thought about bumping rooster up to uh three but i just haven't gone around doing it yet because i'm not 100 percent sure roosters like search effect is really good through the combo and it's non once per turn like sacking off to set a fire formation from the uh, deck is really good uh, for the two cards, two Coyote, last the two ups. Uh, this card is really good. Um, it's just a like a Cyber Dragon. You're always gonna if you don't have a Fire Formation in your hand, you're not gonna play anyway. So you need to have the. Uh, so you're gonna like it's just a free extender as long as you have a Fire Formation card. And if you don't have Fire Formation card, you're not gonna play. There's only one instance where this guy, like conflicts, and that's with like Raven. Whereas Raven can be any Fire Formation you want by just linking into Almirage. Uh, it definitely causes like some weird plays here and it makes this card practically dead if you open it with raven and don't have a fire formation 
But if you have Fire Formation plus the Raven plus Coyote, the amount of like plus is pr pretty pretty prevalent. Uh, we'll just move on here to the one like the uh, one ups, one ram, one bear, and one buffalo. So ram came up quite a bit actually. I was able to special ram off of elephant, whereas if this was uh, spirit, it would not have done me anything. So it's actually like I do really much like the incorporation of ram. I think it's really good. I actually thought about cutting brother of the fire fist bear because uh, you know the the effect never came up. I never used the tiger king loop etc. But it actually kind of popped up once to where like I just added an entire board by like bringing this back, popping a card for free under eagle, overlaying into cardinal, solve three cards with you know it's pretty pretty powerful. And then buffalo is like one of the best cards in my opinion, uh, just for the simple fact of that it allows you to pay cost. So like you don't have to pay cost, but you can pay cost under eagle. So like you use buffalo's effect, pay the cost, and like dome and like dragon to the graveyard, summon this, and then dome will trigger summoning back the dragon, and the dragon can bring back another card. So. It's definitely um, super good, super good. And you can also do the same thing with Bear. You can pop a card with Bear, use Buffalo's Effect in Graveyard, sending Bear and Dome. Dome brings back Bear, Bear pops another card. So like, it's definitely like the plays are definitely there. Buffalo should be a hollow in my opinion, because just how good it is. Uh, moving on, we play one Eland. Eland is the ritual monster. This card's actually quite busted, but it's, it has a very big weakness in the sense of, uh, it does not destroy what it negates. But other than that, it's like, you played at one because you only want to see it, and this card was just like holding the line throughout the entire event. Uh, there's actually a Cyber Dragon duel, which I think I have recorded that I'll feature. Like, I just Cyber Dragon's a super powerful deck, and he just baited the Eland uh, for sure. For the final monster, we just have the three Ash. Uh, Ash is fire, so it kind of fits the theme. However, if I had an extra pair of Impermanence, I'd probably play Impermanence instead. Just because, you know, like, Perm is stronger, in a sense, like, this got called by the Grave, I think, twice, and Perm would not have got called by the Grave. But with that being said, it is fire, so it just kind of fits the theme of the deck. It is, like, you need to have something to kind of interact with your opponent, and you can. If you open multiples, and you have, like, Elin, you can pitch one off of Elin to grab yourself the counter trap. If you don't have access to it, so then you have, like, essentially Elin, the Elin effect, counter trap effect, and then an Ash Blossom effect. So you have three forms of interruption in that sense. So... Three Ash Blossom. Moving on, we have the Triple Tinky. This card reaped Cosmic Cyclone. It didn't really get Ash, but it got Cyclone to quite a bit because people were side decking it. Because coincidentally, just as good as Cyclone is against Eldritch, it's just as good against our deck as well. Uh, Tensu is remarkable. Uh, do always, I always caught myself using Tensu, but I'd use Tensu's normal summon first, so like I could kind of bait stuff and kind of like always have my normal summon. So. Tensu is really good. I was bouncing back Tinky a lot in the grind game. So this deck is actually pretty grindy. This deck can, in my opinion, it has a lot of potential, like raw potential, and it can for for sure keep up with like the grind games of like Eldritch and stuff like that. Just because like the deck goes like plus eleven, it's crazy how much pluses this deck gets, and uh, the fact that the deck just does it so well. I mean, like as as much as I joke and say this deck goes like plus eleven and does nothing, the deck goes plus eleven and puts up like two to three forms of interaction. But the deck is not like break your board dot deck. It's build a good going first board and then you just out resource your opponent through like the later turns, etc. So that's it for the three ofs. We play two Liang Peak. Liang Peak is just super solid. The ability to like save yourself from battle phase. The searching effect is really good, and it's always treated as a fire formation. So do keep that in mind. Uh, nothing's really changed with this list since um, since I last profiled this, but you know, I do have a few changes I am going to make. Uh, two Dome, one Engine, this is like the perfect ratio. I will not ever cut any of these down. Um, however, do always like, this deck has like, this deck's like DDDs in a sense because it uses every mechanic except for Pendulum. And, uh, but like, there were so many times like I could have just fused off like a grabbing Engine. Like I opened a handful of monsters and like Raven. I could linked off the Raven, fused off my monsters. And done plays that way, you know, at least done something in a sense, but you know, I didn't, wasn't even seeing it. That's the lack of like, ex like a playing experience I have with the deck. But we're, I think I'm gonna hit this deck pretty hard in the next few weeks as time is coming and uh, try to get a better list and try to maybe not even get a better list, but better understand like the interactions and stuff that we can get. So, but yep, yeah, uh, this card right here is like the add back is so, so powerful. Like having like engine fuse away like your panda you have in your hand and then use like Elon to pop this to get back the panda and then like you can use your Cento at the right moment and special the panda you just added back. It's really good. And the fact that Dome is a monster reborn is super powerful. It just sucks that this card cannot be, can only be activated once and then like you have to activate it to get the monster reborn. So that's where like a few changes I believe will come in the list. 
Not with Domi, but with in other cards that we play. One Yoko. Yoko was great. It was the Mystic Mine Hour. This card, like, single Henley, like, it's just super good. Like, you activate this, you can force singular boards of negation, like, Dogmatica invoked. Sometimes they just end on a Mechaba. The uh, Cyber Dragon player just ended on a Infinity. However, Cyber Dragon player had Al Mirage, so, like, this card didn't do its... Al Mirage was the winning factor in that matchup. But Yoko just allows you to force certain problematic cards. There's also the Mystic Mine out. We did have a Mystic Mine player floating around, so the fact that Mystic Mine exists, I want to have, like, a main deck way to uh, out it. Third triple call by. Never saw it when I got hand trapped, but always saw it when I didn't. But you were a combo deck, so you kind of have to. You have to have this. I mean, there's no if, ends, or buts about it. Uh, one Monster Reborn. I mean, not much to be said. And then the two Sento. So actually, Sento's getting cut for a World Legacy Succession because this card, I opened this card multiples too many times. Way too many times. And the fact of, like, I even playing it, I saw how many times you can recycle this card and always have access to it through the sense of, like, Elephant. You can just recycle it with Elephant. We'll always give you access to it. And I know some people say, like, well, you want to have one on your turn and one on your opponent's turn, and that's fine and dandy when you don't open them, but if you're playing them at two cards, two, that's like a 20, 22%, 20-something percent chance you're going to open one of them, and then you're always, it's, it's, you're going to open it anyway. So, like, two or three games out of the entire day, I opened both of these cards in my hand. And that is unheard of. Like, I, it's at that point, it's not even worth it. Like, if you can't even, if these cards are breaking your hand, like, it's not even worth the having one on your turn, having one on your opponent's turn. At that point, you'd much rather have this just as a form of, like, you set up, you don't even, if it's brick, contributing to more bricks than it is good, it's not worth it. But it is a searchable one, like, counter trap that can be recycled. So I do believe one needs the same deck, but I do believe this one copy will become a uh, more legacy succession. Because if you really think about it, you can do, like, some crazy plays with succession as well. Um, you can link off Al Mirage, you can, you can link off, um, if this guy eats an imperm, you can link it off into Al Mirage, then once succession it back, use the effect, you know, just just things like that. You can just succession is just a very good extender, especially since you're always getting to your link too, so for sure this is going to be a succession. Uh, moving on to the extra. Now, again, nothing has really changed. We do have the two Eagle. Um, Eagle's just super busted. However, this card did eat an Ogre, which was my fault because I, I'm an idiot. Uh, Al Mirage was up on the field and it, I activated the effect and they ogred it and I could have used Al Mirage, but I didn't even think about it. I let it go through and that really cost me the game in that game one. Uh, it was a draw against Invoked Dogmatica, which another, again, profile's coming here shortly. One Peacock. Peacock's actually pretty good. I understand some people don't like this card and some people are very iffy on it. And I am too. I think it could have been better than what it is, but the simple fact that we can make this and then just steal something and then link into a Link 3 is really good. So... And that's it for the Fire Fist links, but we do have Al Mirage for the Unicorn, or yeah, Al Mirage for the Raven, <laughs> U Nightmare Unicorn. Unicorn's in here because, like, your turn three, you can turn, like, Eagle, link up into a Unicorn, spin a card, etc. And Al Mirage, or not Al Mirage, and Peacock to steal a card, link up into Unicorn, spin a card. Uh, then we play one Boral Sword Dragon. Uh, we are at 14 cards in the extra deck still. I couldn't figure out what I wanted. I do believe I might put in a Appalosa, just because, like, as good as Boral, Boral, Boral Sword, excuse me, Boral Sword is, it's still, you know, I don't know how to put it. It definitely um, struggles. It's it's harder to make than Access Code Talker, and however, I don't feel like dropping money for an Access Code Talker. Uh, but most of the times, this card never came up. Like, I never had to make this card to push for damage because you just had enough raw damage because most of your Fire Fists are, like, 2, 2k and above, and you have, like, you can just clear an entire board super easy and then poke for game. But it's, it's like a safety net for, like, if you're struggling to get to the damage, you can have it. But I do think I'll put an Apollosa as, like, the 15th card. Because there was some times when, like, my board was kind of eh, but if I could have just pushed, like, I could have got one more monster out, and I could have pushed for a extra, you know, put out an Apollosa, which is still better than nothing, given, you know, it's, it's Apollosa is better than Firewall and Pass. So, uh, that's it for the links so far. Yeah, that's it for the links, actually, not so far. Uh, for the XYZs, we have one, tiger, two Tiger Kings, excuse me, two Tiger Kings. Uh, this card is phenomenal, like, going, like, just the ability to, like, shuffle things back is super good. We have Cardinal. Cardinal is actually, again, amazing. You just shuffle things back. Like, the, the game three that this deck has the ability to remove cards is amazing. And, like, Tiger King is such a problematic card. So, like, against the Dogmatica matchup, Tiger King got negated by Florida Lease, but, like, Tiger King was a problem because if Tiger King resolved, I shut off everything. So they had to solve Tiger King. or they, And then even Tiger King had a floating effect. So it made everything difficult. They couldn't get rid of Tiger King because they got rid of Tiger King under Eagle. Tiger King would float. 
So I had to get rid of Eagle. So this card's set here. So then this card still detaches its cost. So like you can still detach and attempt to activate the effect and everything. But like, yeah, this card is super problematic. I do only have the super at the moment. I do think I'm going to upgrade it to the ultimate here soon because I really do enjoy playing this deck. It's part of the Crusade. One Tornado Dragon, one Abyss Dweller, one Chalk and Nine, one Dryden. So actually, dry, this package right here came up quite a bit. Um, because I actually, so like, I'm a huge misplay on my part. You should always kind of blind Dweller in a way, because just the format's so graveyard dependent. However, I didn't blind Dweller at all. For some reason, I thought I was, uh, for some reason, I just wanted to make Dryden. So I just always blind the Dryden. And that was, that at the time, that was the appropriate play, because Dryden's just such a problematic card. Especially if you, uh, combo it off with like swan here uh, essentially like you make the dryden and then you can pop a card and in order to get or the dryden they have to go into the battle phase or unless they have like a monster or a spell or trap but then you have like sento and elan to protect the dryden so they go in the battle phase you have the swan that you can pop something with too not to mention you have a, a, a dryden pop as well so it's definitely like super oppressive in that sense but from my like nervousness and just kind of like not playing the deck in like a local format or like an interactive format um, it definitely showed that I misplayed quite a bit because my ending boards were now just Dryden and Elan. Instead, it should have been like Dryden, Elan, and Swan, or Dryden, Elan, and another rank four. But yeah, you live and you learn. So one Swan, uh, Swan is your water down Dryden, but it, it, I think you have to play it just because again, like Swan is still a form of interruption. It kind of makes your opponent have to solve the card before the battle phase because otherwise Swan's going to take something, and especially in time, guys. Time is super important because Swan just pops down and burns, and you can win in time. So, uh, yeah. So actually, believe it or not, uh, like I said, I went two two or two one two. I believe I lost twice, won twice, had a draw. Um, I'm not going to show my side deck because I already took it apart. But a card that I was testing for the side deck that came in really handy. I'll show you guys. Is three Hatronade. So I kind of like said with giggles, I was like, I'm going to play Hatronade. And guys, this card's actually quite busted. So like against Eldritch, you activate this thing before you do anything, and all their they either they have to they have to activate their like the habanero and the conquistador. But that's okay because if they even if they have the golden lord, they're just vanillas. They'll come out, they can't do anything because you haven't committed to the board yet. So then those cards are just sitting vanillas for you to just like solve and deal with instead of being just forms of disruption. Um against Altergeist, like yes, their uh, protocol and yes, spoofing is a problem, but like what's more of a problem, I believe is like their strikes, their other their other powerful traps. So you just activate Hatronade and bounce everything, and it's super powerful. Same with the uh, Dogmatica matchup. You just activate this, bounce back the Punishment, then you, instead of having to deal with Punishment that solves two cards, you just have to deal with the Mechaba and a Floor de Lis. Ho ho ho, Floor de Lis. So like, um, Hatronade definitely performed very well. It does have some weaknesses, especially against more of like a lower tier bracket. Hadronade's weak because a lot of the lower tier stun decks play like Crackdowns, um, What's the other card that's a crackdowns, like all those Phantom Blade cards, all that type of things. But like this card right here just solves strikes, solves set and perm, solves judgments. Actually, it probably will bait a judgment if anything. Um, it can solve like uh, Twin Twisters, Cosmics, all that type of thing. This card can easily solve. So I do recommend if you guys don't have Lightning Storms and you want to play like a budget card to remove back row and that's what you're looking for, Hatronade is a very solid budget option for you guys. But uh, yeah, so that's it for the video, guys. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Remember to get yourself your Emperor Charles Field Center if you guys have it. And remember, hit that join button down below. It'll be really appreciated. Anything that goes towards the channel gets put back into it. And this is Charles from Team COG, signing out. Hey,